Let's uh, get over some more news now. Another big story today, a lot kicking off in Greece. That 48-hour paralysis is into its second day, and Athens is witnessing another show of force outside Parliament. Lawmakers are preparing to give final approval to even more tough cuts in a desperate attempt to stave off bankruptcy. Now, you may recall yesterday, Wednesday, protests saw around 100,000 protesting and clashing with police. Let's see what's happening there today. Sarah Firth's in Athens for us. Hi there, Sarah. It feels like a lost cause for the Greek people, I guess. We can hear the noise over your shoulder there, but that's not stopping them turning out today, is it? Absolutely. Those violent scenes we saw yesterday as you uh, had the clashes between the police and the protesters haven't deterred people today. I'm going to show you behind me here on St. Agnes Square outside the main parliament building. Again, we've got that huge turnout in numbers from people coming to protest against the austerity measures. Now, they're uh, set to potentially pass in Parliament today. It's thought that they will go through, uh, gaining initial approval yesterday. We've actually just been down at one of the barricades off to the left of the Parliament building. The mood today are relatively calm, certainly in contrast to this time yesterday. We haven't felt that rising tension uh, just yet. And obviously, everyone that we've spoken to saying they don't really want to see a repeat of those violent clashes. But unfortunately, uh, public anger really reaching those limits. The people here saying uh, again to us that it's simply they've reached breaking point. A lot of the people we were talking to down on the streets were trying to tell us exactly what these austerity measures meant to them, because we hear a lot about these measures. But, uh, you know, practically in the lives of these people, everyone in the country has been affected. Uh, it's meant wage cuts for most of the people here in Greece of up to 30 percent and even more in some cases. And on top of that, they have tax hikes, uh, that unemployment in the country cripplingly high at the moment got a lot of people who are finishing education and they've got absolutely nowhere to go in their money. We've seen the emergence of a new generation of homeless here. Uh, the people who would have been in the middle class who've lost their jobs uh, simply can't make rent anymore. So it's had a very immediate impact, this two years of austerity, on the lives of the people here. And they haven't really seen much in return for it. These measures that the Eurozone leaders keep implementing simply don't seem to be working. So as you can see, the turnout here today again are extremely strong from the uh, Greek public. And uh, what's being said about this Eurozone leaders meeting on Sunday where they're going to gather to try to work out some solution to try and take this forward? Is anyone hopeful that that will bring some end in sight? Well, I think the feeling amongst uh, certainly the analysts that we've spoken to and the experts have said that uh, it's expected that some sort of deal or announcement will have to be made on Sunday by the Eurozone leaders because if not, the repercussions of that would be very, very immediate, certainly on the financial markets that are already extremely nervous about the situation. As you can imagine, I'm sure it's uh, the rest of Europe are going to be watching the situation playing out here in Greece very, very closely. They scenes yesterday where the air here was filled with smoke and tear gas not going to be instilling confidence in anyone at all. Uh, now on Sunday they're going to be uh, deciding whether or not to approve that next tranche of money, the 8 billion euro uh, that Greece needs to stay afloat and of course as we've said before this isn't just a Greek problem because if Greece uh, exits from the eurozone or doesn't get that next tranche of money uh, then it's going to have an impact on the other European countries as well, the other eurozone countries. And one of the big problems we've heard uh, from a lot of the people we've spoken to is trying to gain consensus amongst the 17 member states that are using the single currency. And we've seen time and again that that's proved extremely hard. They always seem to be on a back foot. But a lot of the experts that I've spoken to here in Athens have said it's not just that they have this trouble uh, time-wise in coming up with solutions in a timely manner, but also that their whole approach to the situation has been fundamentally flawed. They're looking at it in a way where they're trying to please constantly the financial markets. And the people here have said, you know, what about us? We're the ones who are paying for these measures. We're paying for it with our jobs. We're paying for it in our wages. Uh, so, as we've said before, so that's the way that a lot of people see this going. They say they've not got uh, just a financial deficit, but a democratic one as well. OK, Sarah, thanks for bringing us up to date there. Very noisy situation, ongoing and fluid situation. We'll be coming back to you throughout the course of the afternoon for more updates. Sarah Firth, our correspondent in Athens.